The questions I tend to get asked most often revolve around the topic of practice. How do I practice? What should I be practicing? And for how long should I be practicing each day? Now, I can't give a one size fits all answer to those questions, but what I can do is share some general tips that will help you get the most out of your guitar practice sessions. If you're new here, my name is Ross Campbell from bulletproofguitarplayer.com. Welcome to my channel. Also, thank you to Soundbrenner for sponsoring today's video. More on that later. Tip number one is be realistic with your schedule. When I was a music student working a part-time job, I had quite a lot of free time on my hands to dedicate to guitar practice. I would go through phases of intense, focused practice sessions that would last anywhere from 15 minutes to sometimes up to nine or 10 hours at the most. At the end of every day, I would look at my schedule for the following day and work out how much time I realistically had to set aside for guitar practice. And I had to be realistic with my time frames because as you guys know, there is there are more things to take care of in life than uh, honing your skills as a musician, you know? So some days I would have a long shift at work or some uni classes or clothes to wash or all of those things in one day. And that meant that some days I would only have a spare 15 to 30 minutes to dedicate to my guitar practice. But if 15 to 30 minutes was all that I had, I would still practice. Even if the day before I had done an eight hour long practice session, I never had that mindset of thinking, well, because I did so much practice yesterday and I only have 15 minutes today, I'm not gonna do anything. I'll just leave it to tomorrow when I have more time. I never thought that way. I always stuck to daily practice. So the point is be realistic guys. If you're a music student working a part-time job or you're just a music student, then you probably have quite a lot of free time on your hands that you can dedicate to getting better at your instrument. And trust me, you're gonna wanna seize that time as much as possible whilst you still can. On the other hand, if you're working 40 plus hours a week and you've maybe got a family to take care of, don't get disheartened just because you don't have X amount of hours free to dedicate to guitar practice that you wish you had. You can still make progress with 30 minutes a day every day if you really want to. And that leads me to tip number two, quality and consistency over quantity. If I go to the gym for three hours a day, six days a week, simply standing around in that gym environment is not gonna get me jacked, right? I'm gonna have to lift some weights, I'm gonna have to follow a plan and ideally keep a record of what I do in every session so that I can track my progress and reflect on it in the future. Same rules apply to your practice sessions. If you decide that one day you wanna practice guitar for eight hours because that feels like a significant amount of time, but you spend those eight hours just noodling around on your guitar, playing things that you're already good at, maybe scrolling through Instagram, and uh, not really pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone at all. If that's what you do with those eight hours, you're not gonna make any progress, especially if that's all the practice you do in an entire week. However, if you instead set yourself an achievable goal of practicing for one hour a day, seven days in a row with a clear list of material that you wanna cover in every session, it's very likely that you'll get to the end of that week feeling like you have actually achieved something. Consistent daily practice is always gonna get better results than picking up your guitar two or three days out of the week and not really pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone, just playing things you already know and putting in a half-assed effort. Uh, even if on those two or three days you you play for you know up to eight hours, quality and consistency still matter more than quantity. Moving on to tip number three, create long and short-term goals for yourself. An example of a long-term goal would be, I want to become a confident blues improviser. Now I say long-term, but really that would be a never-ending goal, right? But from there, you could create a series of short-term goals that you can work on week by week, month by month, to ensure that you get closer and closer to that big picture goal. And let's say that was your long-term goal to get good at blues improvisation. Well, from there you could say, well, okay, if I wanna become good at blues lead playing, I'm gonna need to have a good shuffle, a good slow blues, a good rumba, uh, a good funk blues, probably some other things 
as well, but let's let's go with those four. Now you've broken that huge goal down into four things that you can target in your practice sessions, which is great because when you only set long-term goals for yourself, in your mind, it's almost like you're at the foot of a huge mountain staring up, it's intimidating you. And you're not really sure how to begin tackling this, this monster that's in front of you. But by breaking it down into smaller chunks that you can really zone in on in your practice without worrying about the entire mountain that is your big picture goal, it's gonna be much less daunting and you're more likely to stay consistent. Now we're getting closer to the stage where you can start designing a practice routine for yourself. Now this could be a series of videos on its own. So if you wanna know more about my approach to creating a practice routine, then be sure to let me know in the comments. But tip number four is create a routine based on your goals. So you've decided you want to become a confident blues improviser and you've broken that big mountain of a goal down into four smaller areas that you can focus on in your practice. Now what? Well, you would take each of those four things and figure out what could you be practicing in order to get better at them. Now, the examples I had were all improvisation based. I suggested working on a slow blues, a shuffle, a rumba, and a funk blues. So here's examples of very specific things that you could fill a routine with based on that. One would be find a shuffle backing track on YouTube and practice improvising to it. You could start with that. Uh, two would be transcribe a solo that one of your favorite blues players has played over a shuffle. And three could be practice your time feel for a shuffle with a metronome. Now I did only mention the shuffle there uh, and that is me thinking about a shorter practice routine that's maybe 30 to 45 minutes long. So a general rule of thumb for short routines versus longer routines would be that if you only have 30 to 45 minutes a day to dedicate to guitar practice, don't try to cram everything into that one day. Instead, you should plan out routines for the entire week to ensure that you cover everything that you wanna cover, but in a way that is manageable for the time frame that you're working with. So let's say on Monday, you could start by working on your shuffle. On Tuesday, you could look at the rumba. Wednesday could be slow blues day. You get the idea. For longer routines that last multiple hours, of course, you'll be able to fit in more material and I would advise that you make an effort to fit in as much as possible because when you're doing a longer practice routine that's lasting for multiple hours, you'll find that you'll get to a point with everything that you're practicing where you've done it for so long that you're starting to lose focus and get distracted. So when that happens, it's a good idea to move on to something else. I mentioned practicing a shuffle with a metronome and speaking of metronomes, today's video sponsor is Soundbrenner. Soundbrenner make vibrating metronome watches for musicians that are completely silent. They recently sent me the Soundbrenner Core, which I've been practicing with quite a lot as of late. And how it works is you double tap the watch screen. And if you can hear that, the watch starts vibrating. It starts sending a pulse through your wrist, which you keep time with when you're practicing. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I didn't really enjoy playing around with this watch the first few days that I had it. Uh, it is quite challenging to begin with, just keeping time with no actual audio reference, just going off the vibrations in your wrist alone. But if you're serious about improving your timing, and let's be real, we all should be. It's one of the most important things to work on as a musician it's worth putting in the time to get used to using this watch. That being said, you can sync up the watch with your phone on the Soundbrenner app via Bluetooth, and that will provide an audio click that's gonna be in sync with the vibrations from the watch. So if you want to use it with audio, you can do that as well. There's a bunch of things you can change and alter within the metronome side of the Soundbrenner Core. It's very easy to change the tempo. You can use the tap tempo feature by just tapping the screen to your desired tempo, or you can use the wheel on the outside of the screen to adjust the tempo. You can also change the time signature, you can change the subdivisions, and you can even place accents on different beats in the bar. But in addition to the metronome, the Soundbrenner Core actually has a few other tricks up its sleeve, one being a tuner feature, which is very cool. So in the box, 
you'll find a little circular magnet that you can discreetly stick to the back of your headstock. And to turn that into a tuner, all you have to do is switch to the tuner setting on the Soundbrenner core, pull the core out of the strap and stick the little magnet side on the uh, little circular thing that you stick to the back of your headstock. And there you have it, you've got a tuner. Also, if you need to be mindful of your volume when you're practicing, the core actually has a built-in decibel meter. All in all, I think it's a fantastic little tool that you could use to get even more out of your practice sessions. And so I figured that this video topic would be a good opportunity um, to talk about this product. I was not paid to make this video for them, but as you'll see in the description box beneath the video, I have left a link to purchase Soundbrenner watches. So if you decide that you wanna buy one and you also enjoy the free content that I'm making here on YouTube and you wanna support the channel, then please buy one using the link that I have provided because that helps me out. I get a little kickback from every sale that is made through that link. So yeah, it helps me out. Thanks again to Soundbrenner for sponsoring the video and for sending me the awesome Soundbrenner core. Let's get back to the lesson. Tip number five really only applies to longer sessions where you're practicing for multiple hours at a time, but it's take short breaks. When I'm practicing for a few hours at a time, I often find that my focus starts to drift after around 40 minutes or so. And so what I'll do is I will set a timer on my phone or on my computer for 40 minutes. And as soon as it goes off, I will immediately get up, put my guitar down and get out of the room that I've been practicing in and just go do something else to take my mind elsewhere. I'll go make a cup of coffee, chill out on the couch, watch something on YouTube for five minutes or so, just so that I can switch off from practice mode and go back to it feeling somewhat refreshed mentally and ready to focus again. My sixth and final tip goes back to my analogy of guitar practice and going to the gym. Remember at the start of the video I said, if you wanna make progress in the gym, you're gonna to have to lift some weights, follow a plan and keep a record of what you do in each session. So tip number six is keep a practice diary. Back when I was a music student and I was really intent on practicing as much as I possibly could day in, day out, the one thing that really kept me motivated was tracking my own progress. And I would do this by typing up a short document at the end of every practice session that would detail how much time I'd spent practicing, what material I'd covered in my session, uh, what I felt I was good at, things I needed to improve on. I would give myself suggestions for how I could improve on specific things for the following day. I would say like, be sure to be mindful of your picking position for this particular alternate picking exercises, things like that, for example. And I would do this even if I only practiced for 10 minutes. I would do it for if I'd practiced for six hours or 10 minutes, it didn't matter. Just at the end of every practice session, at the end of every day, I would type up this short document to reflect on my progress. It's kind of like talking to yourself in a way and it might seem kind of silly to some of you watching this, but trust me, if you guys get into the habit of practicing guitar every day and you start writing diaries after every session, a few weeks from now, go back and look at your initial diary entries and reflect on how far you've come, reflect on the progress that you've made in that time. There is nothing more motivating than that to me at least. I think that too often we look for motivation and inspiration externally. Uh, and what I mean by that is we look at the successes of other people and try to draw inspiration from them in order to get ourselves motivated enough to create real change in our own lives. And it's totally fine to do that, but I feel like internal motivation is so much more powerful. Yes, you will have to invest a significant amount of practice time before you find that internal motivation, before you feel like you've actually made some significant progress. But when you do, it's a real game changer. And keeping a practice diary of every practice session that you do will provide that for you. So just start. That does it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that 
uh, listening to me talk about my approach to guitar practice uh, was helpful to you and if it was then please give it a like and share the video with your guitar playing friends click subscribe and the bell for notifications about future uploads thank you again to soundbrenner for sponsoring this video and i will see you guys in the next one